We all make mistakes sometimes. And if we are lucky, an eraser will undo the damage. We can rub it across the page, wipe away the dust, and all that is left of our carelessness is a barely noticeable smudge. But sometimes mistakes can't be erased. No matter how old we become, I was in grade nine when I first learned that life does not come with erasers. I could not erase what I and other kids in my class did to a girl named Violetta. She joined our class halfway through the year. She came from Winnipeg, which for us cool kids from Toronto might as well have been a different planet. It was 1967 and we were into tie dye and leather vests. We listened to the doors and Led Zeppelin. Violetta wore navy suits and awkward shoes. She listened to Patsy Cline in the Kingston Trio. She was tall, overweight, and had a funny name. She was probably as insecure and frightened as we were. But we knew each other, and she was an outsider. And because she was different, we just decided not to like her. We teased her unmercifully. We tripped her in the aisles and kicked her books when she dropped them. At lunchtime, we would put stuff in her food when she wasn't looking. She became the class joke. What she wore, what she said, what she ate, somehow always gave one of us an idea for a wisecrack or a practical joke. There was a kind of one-upmanship about getting Violetta that had less to do with her and more to do with our own jungle mentality. She was a pawn in a very childish and hurtful game. Violetta started getting sick a lot. Sometimes she would miss a whole week of school, but the Violetta story still went on without her. We said she was from outer space, a small planet where everyone was a moron or an idiot. Then one day I got stuck with Violetta for a school project. Everyone kidded me, and I laughed with them. The day before the project was due, I went over to her house to work on it with her. Her mother fixed us a plate of cookies and some Cokes, and she kept coming into the room to check up on us. She said I was the only one of Violetta's friends who had come here after school, and that she was very glad to finally meet me. Then the phone rang, and it turned out to be for me. On the other end of the line, I heard a bunch of my classmates giggling and asking stupid questions and making stupid comments. They waited for me to laugh along with them, but all I could see was Violetta's mother standing there in the kitchen sink with her back to me, pretending that she couldn't hear. But I'm sure she heard everything, and it was at that moment that I began to see what we had been doing to Violetta. When I hung up, she asked me, why don't you like her? She likes you. Nobody has asked me a question before or since that made me feel so stupid. Eventually, Violetta's parents moved her to another school, and when she, we heard that she had had a nervous breakdown, everybody laughed again. Years later, I saw Violetta in a bank in my mother's neighborhood. I stood there wanting to say something that would make up for the past. I wanted to say hello. I wanted to ask her forgiveness, but I could not. It was too long ago, and no words of mine will ever change what had happened to her. Now, when I read today's gospel warning us of putting stumbling blocks in another's way and of the need for forgiveness, it made me remember this story. Violetta stumbled over the blocks that we put in her way. She took our abuse, and I think she even forgave us because she kept on trying to be our friend. She tried to love her enemies, but we would not let her. Maybe we can be excused for our behavior because we were young and immature, or because some of us came from broken homes, or because we did not have a proper upbringing, or because we may, were, were also made fun of at some point in our lives. 
But even though we cannot and should not be blamed for the cards that we have been dealt in life, there are times when we need forgiveness for the way we play those cards against others. Christian forgiveness begins when we stop looking for excuses and accept what we have done and what has been done to us. Christian forgiveness is discovering that we are more like other people than unlike them. Christian forgiveness begins when we recognize our unworthiness and put God at the center of our lives and our relationships. And because God is compassionate and because he is always willing to forgive, he will help us to unmake our mistakes. He will help us to love others as we should. Sticks and stones can break our bones, but words can shatter a soul. A sensitive young girl got hurt because a bunch of self-important jerks decided she was only there for their amusement. We tell ourselves that it doesn't matter, that it takes more than a few jokes and a little gossip to send someone over the edge. Maybe so, but maybe not. There is no way to be sure how badly we may hurt others. But I do know this. You can't take back the injuries that you inflict on them. In life, there are no erasers. There is only forgiveness. Let us now join our prayers together and ask God to help us to be open to his presence in our lives. That our church continue to witness to the presence of Christ in this world and inspire courage and faith in God's people, we pray to the Lord. Lord that Christ will make us instruments of peace and hope so that we may love others as he has loved us, we pray to the Lord. Lord that God will continue to send out his grace to all men and women of faith so that they can make Christ the cornerstone and foundation of their lives, we pray to the Lord. Lord. That those in our television community who have asked for our prayers may receive the peace of Christ to strengthen them in their trials, we pray to the Lord. Lord. That those who are struggling to know Christ and to base their choices and their direction in life on his mercy, love, and forgiveness, may find the strength to live good Christian lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord. Almighty Father, forgive us for the times we have hurt others. Help us to open our hearts and to share your love with all people. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become the bread of life. Yes. Blessed be God forever. Through the mystery of this water and wine, may we who share in Christ's humanity come to share in his divinity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to offer, fruit to the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord God, we ask you to see the gifts we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquity. Cleanse me from my sins. 